Welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Amber from Unique Upcycles and in today's video I am going to be making over a 1955 mid-century modern lane cedar chest. But before we get into that, if you caught last week's video, I did announced that I recently hit 1,000 Instagram followers. If you're not already following me on Instagram, be sure to go ahead over there. I post behind the scenes and all that good stuff, and that I would be doing a giveaway to celebrate. So I'm gonna be giving away two of my favorite zebra brushes. This is the zebra square brush. If you caught my dining set makeover part two, I did use this on the chairs. And then this is the Zebra Triangle Brush. Uh, it's actually one of my favorites. I've used it several times and I'm actually using it in today's video. So I will be giving these away. Stay tuned throughout the video. I'll uh, let you guys know how to enter the contest. Um, and then these brushes are paid for by my own money. I do not have a sponsorship or a partnership or anything like that with Zebra. So I bought these with my own money. I'm shipping these with my own money. It's just my way of saying, Thank you for supporting my business, for supporting my channel. So I really do appreciate you guys and all of that. So if you do like my videos, I do post them every Saturday. So be sure to hit subscribe and that little bell notification so you get notified when I do upload. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with this week's project. Okay, so this is the piece that we're working on today. It is a 1955 mid-century modern Lane cedar chest. Lane actually recalled all the locks on their cedar chest from 1912 to 1987, and they will send you a replacement free of charge. They have a link through their website that you just fill out the form and give all the information and they'll send it to you. The way that you can tell how old your cedar chest is is that the serial number is actually the manufacture date in reverse. So mine is December 30th, 1912. 1955. That's just the easiest way to tell. I'll also put the link to the lane site in the description. I decided that I'm going to sand down the top, so I'm going to take it off by the hinges and then I'm going to remove the hardware because I'm going to reuse part of the hardware. I will then clean the entire piece inside and out with the TSP substitute. When cleaning raw cedar though, you just want to use mild soapy water. Do not use the TSP on the inside. Using my orbital sander, I started with an 80 grit and worked my way up to a 240 to sand down the finish off the top of the chest. This is a veneer, so I was careful not to sand through. We're going to be doing a stain layering technique today, and I'll be using Barathane Antique White and Weathered Gray to get this look. Before I start the stain, I'm just going to wipe back any dust with a clean microfiber cloth. I'm going to start by applying a coat of the antique white with a foam brush across the entire top. After that's fully covered, I'm going to wipe back the excess with a shop towel just to give me an even stain surface to begin the layering process on. And then I'm going back in with the antique white and the foam brush and doing kind of just like a stripe pattern to begin the layering. Once I get all the antique white on there, I'm going to switch over into the weathered gray and fill in those gaps with the weathered gray stain. Once I have both colors on, I'm going to take a new clean shop towel and just wipe all that back and kind of blend it in together. Every hour we spend together, I let that dry overnight and the next morning I came back and did a full coat of antique white over the entire top, including over the gray, across everything that I've already done. Using a stain pad, I'm just going to wipe across the entire top with the antique white, kind of just blending it in. I know on here it looks like it's really, really white, but once it dries, I promise you that you can see the gray come through. While that stain is drying, I'm going to move on to the body of the cedar chest. While I was cleaning it, I noticed that there was a lot of grooves and dents, kind of where the veneer was cracking or the finish, whatever was on it was. So I took it outside and just gave it a good scuff sand with my detail sander. I think I'm using about a 120 grit. I just went over the entire piece to smooth out instead of having to wood fill all those dents and grooves. 
Once I was done sanding, I brought it back inside and gave it a good wipe down with a new microfiber cloth to remove any leftover sanding dust. I like to tape off any hardware holes so that paint doesn't drip into it. And then I noticed that some of the trim was coming up, so just using a glue syringe with my Gorilla wood glue, I went ahead and just glued that back in place. This chest had eight different hardware on it, which was a bit excessive for its size, so I decided to fill the center hardware holes and I just used my dab wood filler and then I sanded that smooth once it was dry with the sanding sponge. Using some frog tape, I'm just taping off the top edges of the chest to make sure I don't get any paint on that raw cedar wood on the inside. I'll be using my Zinsser Bin Shellac based primer on this piece and I'm just applying it with a chip brush. I did do a total of three coats across the entire piece. I'm using a bright white paint that has no undertone or anything. It is white, so I want to be sure that there is no bleed through that peeks through on this paint. Also that empty hole at the top, that's where the lock should go, so that's just going to remain empty until the new lock comes in I can replace it. And this is why I ended up doing three coats of primer. This is the bleed through after one coat and there was still even more bleed through that peaked through after the second coat. After I was finally done priming, I took a 220 grit sanding sponge and just sanded smooth any texture or anything that was left over from using the chip brush to put on the primer. And then of course always wipe back any dust with a clean microfiber cloth. I will be using the color white Adirondack by Folk Art today. Folk art paint tends to be pretty thick, so I do always water it down. Uh, you can't see, but I do have my mister out of frame. I am applying this with that zebra triangle brush, which will be included in the giveaway today. And I do a total of three coats of this paint um, just to get really full coverage since this is such a white, white paint. Since this is a mid-century piece, I am trying to go for a little bit of a smoother finish, so I'm keeping my brush strokes going in the same direction as much as possible. Also, after I had this on its back when I was sanding it outside, I decided that it'd probably just be easier to paint on its back, so I do have it on some furniture movers so that I can kind of just spin it around when I need to do a different side. It worked out really well. It was actually pretty efficient. The triangle shape of this brush comes in really handy when getting into these details, the little crevices and whatnot, that tip gets in there and make sure that you get full coverage on everything. Using a 220 sanding sponge, I did lightly sand in between each coat just to knock down any texture to keep that smooth finish. I'm applying the third coat here. You can see that the second coat did really have good coverage, but I wanted to make sure that there was nothing peeking through this white, so I did do a third coat. While I wait for my paint to dry, I'm gonna seal the top in Minmax Polycrylic and Clear Satin. I'm gonna start by just sanding the top very lightly with a 220 sanding sponge. I then applied two coats of the polycrylic with a two inch foam brush over the top. I did sand in between each coat and you do have to wait two hours in between coats for application. To protect my paint, I'll be using Dixie Belle Clear Coat in Flat. Prior to applying my first coat of top coat, I did do a light sand with the 220 sanding sponge after I finished all three coats of the white paint. Using my Zebra Palm Pro brush, I applied three coats of this top coat across the entire piece. When using a water-based top coat, you want to be sure that you do have a damp brush when you start.
Using my normal cleaning method for hardware, which is just a vinegar boil, um, I put the hardware in there and let it boil only to find out that the squared handles were actually chrome plated and it peeled off and then the knobs, it melted the glue. I don't know if they had been re-glued at some point over the years, um, but yeah, they totally came apart. So I was determined to reuse this hardware. I like to reuse mid-century modern hardware when it has the original ones on it. So after taking a wire brush, I scraped off the chrome plating that was on the square poles and then I just took an X-Acto knife and picked out all the old glue that was left on the knob base. So you make all the hardware the same color, I took some rub and buff in the color Silver Leaf and uh, you literally just rub and buff it on and I did this to the square poles as well as all the knobs and the details. Uh, be sure to wear gloves when you do this, this stuff smells really really bad. To reattach the little crystal knobs to the base, I just stuck them in my furniture caster so that they could balance in there. Use some E6000 glue and then just stuck the little crystal knob on the top. This stuff does take up to 72 hours to dry, but once it dries, it like it really, really dries. You won't get it back off. So it is a good option if you need to re-glue hardware back together. It's been 72. There was a black mark on the back of the drawer, so I just took a magic eraser and scrubbed it right off. I'm not sure what's in these things, but it works great. The bottom drawer had originally been lined with felt, but there really wasn't much felt left in it. So when I was out sanding, I just sanded the rest of it away. And I'm now just covering it with some peel and stick contact paper that I got off of Amazon. And here is the completed look. And also the moment I know you guys have been waiting for, the instructions for the giveaway. So it's three simple steps. All you have to do is be subscribed to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, and then leave a comment below. I will reply to the winning comment. The contest will be open until next Friday, March 5th, noon Pacific Standard Time. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask those as well. And once again, thanks for watching and I will see you guys next Saturday.